In today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to start a nail career, whether you're changing careers or you're coming out uh, as your first career. This is the episode for you right now on the Biz Talk. Tracy, how do I get you out of our nail career, my nail career? I'd like super, you- Super, super easy. I tell would, me. I, I'm gone. That's it? That's it. So, see you later? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Wait. <laughs> You tricked me. <laughs> Isn't that how it works when you fire me? Yeah, I see you. See you tomorrow. And when I quit, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> see you tomorrow. That's it, man. Tracy's not allowed to. That's that's it. I'm just saying. Can't quit. Can't be fired. Just don't. Mm. Stop joking about it. Stop it. All right. How to start a nail career. Um, again. If you're thinking about a career in nails, we've seen this so many times, people changing careers, yeah. wanting to get into nails, or um, if it's your first career, let's say you're finishing high school, you want to get into a nail career, um, how do you do it? And I think this will be a good sort of general roadmap for people and to give them the real deal as well, like expectations, um, all those things I think are important. But what would you say Trace, just off the top of your head, let's just let's chat about this. What's the question? <laughs> how to start? How to start a nail how career? How to start? Yeah, like how? I think it's just doing it, you yeah. know, and that's the hardest part because we 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 oh that that, that schooling right. is not going to work with my time frame and. Oh, what, should I wait until, you know, am I too old? Am I too old? Or is the money good? There's so many, and, and, and they just, we just keep on putting it off and putting it off. Each year we're asking, am I too old? Or whatever it is, or it, it's never, it's like having children. <laughs> it's never going to be a perfect time, right? Never. And it's never, it's, it's also not easy. Not, it's not easy. There's you love never, it though. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I, but I, I, I know, especially when you have a career, right? Right. It's hard to make that transition. And, sure. and another thing, the problem is when it comes to whether you're going into the career or you're transitioning from a, a job that's paying, look at the information. Like, I guarantee if you type it in right now, how much does a nail tech make a year? Not what a nail tech makes. For sure. So the information is completely wrong. Correct. So you're looking at that going, I'm only going to make 38 Thirty-eight okay, thousand right, a year. Right, 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 right. Are you kidding me? I'm not switching careers. It's so off base. Completely. So you know, you got to look at the correct information. You got to talk to people that are experienced in the field and what it takes, and be realistic. That's another important thing. Is you know, it it it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's it it is a lot of work. I mean, nothing is. Even people that are doing what they love day in and day out. I'm one of those people. I love business. I love our business. I love what I do. Yeah. Still is gnarly and hard and nails is no different. Even if you love it and you want to make a change into it, it's going to be tough. Yeah. But really, at least for, I mean, I'll say this, like in the United States, step one is you got to have a license. So you're going to need to check local schools schooling right the um, first step step one if you're not in the united states you need to check the requirement a lot of um like a lot of countries in europe you just have to take a course through a manufacturer like an, a certified nail course okay. just to get some kind of certification know, a lot of those are like a couple days a week it just depends could be a couple weeks a couple of, yeah it's exactly not, not really like the states that are, you know, it, it can vary. I think the lowest is 250. The highest, I believe, is 600 for a nail tech uh, hours. Right. So it's quite extensive. But um, yeah, you got to start there. But that's not where you stop also your planning. Correct. You don't go, okay, I got the school part. When once school's out, I'll think about the rest. No, we got, let's do the whole process. We got to, you know, okay, so I got my school down. This is the day I'll be out. This is probably when I'll be taking my state board. What kind of place do I want to work at? Do I want to work commission? Do I want to work birth Do I want, what, what, you know, what am I looking, what am I my special ace in? What, or what services are going to, um, am I going to offer? What, you know, Great. how am I going to pay? If I want to go booth rent, how am I going to pay for that? I'm going to pay for my supply. There's a lot. It's a business. It's a whole business. It's a whole business. And, and just to dive into, you know, some of the details Tracy had mentioned. So you graduate school, you got to get your license. After you get your license, 
um, you need to continue your education learning what services you want to do, right? You want to do acrylic, you want to do gel. I mean, obviously, in the end, you want to do, it'd be nice to learn all of them. Um, you need to figure out, here's here's a big one that Tracy had mentioned, like, do I want to go commission salon first, work as an employee, or do I want to go on my own, have my own salon suite, or work, if it's allowed in your state, work in a salon that is booth rent. These those are things that you have to determine. You get, those are the decisions that are going to have to be made, yep. you know, as you come out. And I know we've talked about this before. For somebody that's fresh coming out of school, a lot of times to get experience, it might be good to go into a commission salon. You know, they're going to pay you hourly mm-hmm. when you're not taking clients. We saw that this morning on on our uh, on our Twitch stream. Somebody had mentioned they picked up a, a gig like that, which was pretty good. And they're getting a commission cut um, just to get experience because if you booth rent right off the bat, you have a weekly rent and you don't have any clients. You need you need some cash stowed away to everything's you know, on you. Yeah, everything's on you. Product, everything, and then sometimes you don't get the help you could use. Right? I was I I talk about this all the time. Like Kathy Chartier, like. Sh- I swear, if she still owned the salon, I'd still be working there. She, you know, kind of thing. She was amazing. And the whole team as a whole, though I was booth renter, was willing to help. Let me watch that, you know, if it wasn't for them, going into a lot of booth rent situations or experiences I hear from other people, oh, that would have been hard, hard. Of course. You know, so for me, you know, I always kind of recommend going into a situation where it is boo- not booth rent at first, you know, because it is all on you. You got to determine how long can I float myself Correct. until I absolutely have to make money because you're not going to make money at first. Right. So, and then that's the whole thing, switching careers, that is almost a little hard harder because you're used to a certain amount of money coming in right Right. and now you're taking that money away or you're trying to figure out how can I work that job and do this at the same time correct yeah there's a lot there's a lot to think about there if you're transitioning because like Tracy said you're going from a consistent steady income if you have a job to you're not you may not you're not going to have the same income straight off the bat if, especially if you're booth renting, you've got literally zero income until you start building your mm-hmm. clientele. Um, we get the question a lot of part-time. Can I do part-time? Can I do both? I mean, I suppose you can. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's going to take longer. It's just going to take longer. And, but... and we're not talking double. It's probably more than double. Right. Because what you're doing is you're saying now... Um, I have a pool of clients, right, that I, you know, that might call or whatever. Now I'm reducing it by quite a bit because I'm telling Habib on the phone that, well, I only do Wednesdays and Friday nights. So you have to fit in that schedule. Right. And then there's only so many spots there too, Correct. you know, so it is, it is harder to build that way. Now, so one thing I want to, I want to just sort of touch on is if you go commission mm-hmm. versus booth rent or versus your own salon suite, the the difference in like investment i think people if you're going booth rent not only do you have your weekly but tracy said you you're it's on you to buy everything salon supplies um product if you're going in acrylic or gel you need you need an investment in product mm-hmm. there is an upfront cost here that is very different than going commission. If you if you start commission in your transition or if you're starting from the beginning straight out of school, um, where commission, none of that responsibility is on you, again, which is why it could be a good place to start. Right. Right. As you develop your skills. Because you're if you're coming right out of school, you have to develop skills. You have to have skills. Right. No, you do, and it's it, it's it's it it's it would kind of be like expecting a, a a doctor, a surgeon, to be able to take a ten week course and be able to go right into heart surgery. Right, like it, right. I mean, we're not we're not doing heart, you know, we're not doing <laughs> emergency situations, but we don't know everything, and especially since you know the reality of it is and and i always tell people this is the reality most schools don't teach you how to actually do nails enough to 
go right into it. So you you, you got to learn in, in in that that meantime. So it's 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 learning and trying to build at the same time. So that's exactly. where the, you know if you get into a place that's going, hey, we're going to help you get the clients. We're going to show you how it's done. We're going to walk through it with you, and you're guaranteed this wage. I think it's a good way to start. Yeah, I really think it's a good way to start your nail journey is that. And look, I've met people where they started commission and they've stayed commission because they literally told me, Habib, when I go home, I don't want to think about it. I'm off and I can do that in a commission salon. I don't have to think about anything. I just products I, there when I get there products there clients are booked when I get there all the expenses are paid yep. I don't have to do any accounting nothing if you go booth rent or salon suite you will you have the uh possibility of making more money that is there mm-hmm. but the responsibility is also more because now you're an accountant you're a marketer you're an inventory specialist the janitor the janitor <laughs> on top of everything else. being a nail technician yeah. Huge differences, two things to think of. Now, starting a nail career trace today, if somebody, what are your thoughts on if somebody should start acrylic gel or how should they determine what they should learn first? This is much about all the research you have to do about what it is to to get the business, you know, business license, all that. You have to do your research on this too. What is everybody asking for? Mm. Now, you may be like, I only want to specialize in gel. But do you live in a town that most of the people that call on that phone or come in that door want acrylic? You might want to think about starting with acrylic. Always, I always recommend offer everything. Of course. But, you know, you might want to make it that focus and you can always transition people. Like I want to, you know, as you gain clientele, you can mold the clientele to what you want. And then have a hundred percent gel clientele or whatever it is. But look, if I if I'm in a gel town, I'm gonna do gel because I know I can say most of those people that are asking if I can take their uh, book them an appointment, I can take them. I'm not. Ah, I don't do that. I don't do that. Yeah. You know, you don't want to say that. So you have to do your research. Yeah, especially starting out. Again, you your desire, your heart's desire might be, I want to do acrylic. You know, I love acrylic. I love, I was trained on acrylic. I do great acrylic nails. That's awesome. But again, like Tracy's saying, you walk in and if you didn't do your research and you're like, why am I not getting clients? Well, because nobody wants acrylic. They all want gel for whatever reason. You like, this is one of those situations where I got to do what's right for the business. Right. I got to do what's right. What's going to help the business start and grow and then Like you were saying, eventually you can start to maybe, maybe you can get four or five, six acrylic clients, or maybe you can transition some if they're interested, but the business, it, I think this is one thing that a lot of people make the mistake in business. And if you're going to start a nail career, this is a, this is a great lesson. You have to do what is right for the business and too often people just do what they want and pride gets in the way sometimes pride gets in the way yeah you can see that in any business restaurant whatever it's like what you're doing isn't working it's good it's good this is what i want to do they just don't get it they need to get it yeah no And, and and here with nails this this is the big difference too habib i just start nobody knows me I don't have any walking billboards out there of clientele. Correct. So Habib comes in out of the street and he goes, I want gel. And I say, I don't do gel. I only do acrylic. And he's going to be, I want gel. There really is nothing for me to stand on, right? Now, I have the semi-clientele, right? Habib's friend, his brother Greg, comes to me and he wants Greg's nails. But Habib comes in and goes, I want gel. And I say, Habib, Greg has acrylic, and you really like them, right? And this is why I do it. And this is da, da, da. now I can I can persuade because I have I have um, not leverage. I have something to back it up, right? Exactly. I, you know, something that he's seen that right. now I can back it up. So right. now I can start molding. You have some uh, some proof in yeah. the market that 
this is successful and it works yeah. and and it's right there for them to see with their yeah. own eyes. Did you like Greg's nails? Correct. Loved Greg's nails. Those are acrylic. There it is. Yeah. Honestly, Tracy, we we see this so much. You 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 know, we both see this where someone is doing something. This is why business is so hard, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Because like somebody wants to market a certain way or they want to do a certain type of nails that they like but it is not what the market demands and so the re- I'm 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 kind of hammering this point because look if you want a career in nails you have to learn business yep and you have to understand in the end all of our bosses including myself is the market that's the way I look at it now I'm not going to like bow down to everything the market says like we have to innovate on our end sometimes we have to look at what the market doesn't have and then innovate to give the market and then test and see if if it responds maybe like here's an example of that i'm going off in eight different directions right now but check this out i know i'm kind of on a roll but but this is what i want to say let's say you go into market and it's gel okay Mm -hmm. and um everybody gets standard gel but there's nobody, there's no information on like duckbill gel nails. I know this is a this is an extreme example, but I'm just saying. Interesting combo, okay. Right? And <laughs> interesting combo. So you're like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna test this out in the market. This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes you you bring a little innovation, you know. I'm not a fan of duckbills. I don't think Tracy is, but I'm just using this as an extreme example. And it hits, and you're like, whoa, everybody wants duckbills, and you're cranking and you're making money. That's what I'm talking about, though, is sometimes you do bring it. You know, you're not going to bow down to everything the market says. You have to look at sometimes what the market doesn't have. But in in the beginning and in most cases, you got to flow with the market demands. Yep. And you've got to kind of go with, you know, rise with the tide and 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 flow with that ocean. Um, and then you can start to bring stuff in a little bit at a time. Right. And then I've seen people go out of business, unfortunately, because oh, dude. they just stand their ground. I, I I have one that I think of right off the top of my head. She came straight out of school and opened a salon, which it work, It can work. I don't recommend, but it can work. But she had no salon experience. And I told her I recommend this. I don't recommend that you do it. Nope, I'm going to do it. Oh, cool, cool. This is what I'm going to name it. Uh, you know, that name is a little, um, we're a small town and you know, just the clientele. I <laughs> might get a off, wrong impression. You might, you, you might get people not go to you because the name is long. Nope. I like it. I think it's funny. I think it's, you know, I, I get it. It is funny. It's like, <laughs> you know, oh, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, I have a three page contract for anybody that wants to come into my salon and they have to pay me first and last booth rent. Um, well, nobody does that here. Um, that's kind of, that's a long contract. I have, you know, um, I don't, I don't recommend that. Like make it brief if you, you know, put the policies in, but you got, you know, nope, this is what I'm doing, you know, and it didn't last a year. Yeah. It's very just, and she would come to me crying and I'm like, try, well, this might be why, you know, I don't, never want to just say that's why. Of course. But just would not would not give it was a pride thing at that point dude it's it destroys so many careers mm-hmm. tracy this is probably one of the big the biggest points on this episode of like how to start a nail career is you you when you start when you're in, starting your nail career you have to be you got to try things flexible you got to be flexible but you have to be honest with yourself in terms of what is working and what is not working. Look, if you're doing something and clearly it's not working, you, you can't try to force it into the market. Mm -hmm. You need to try something new and change. And that's the game of business. That is the game is test it. Shoot. I just, I lost money trying this thing. It didn't work. That's that's business. You move on and you try something different. You know, like if you're like, no, I'm a gel girl. This is an acrylic market, but I'm sticking with gel. And I mean, you you could fl- you might be able to find that gel clientele. It's going to take you a long time. Yeah, right? just expect that's it. That- it's going to take a long time. Don't get confused about why it's taking longer. It's because you're not offering. You're not 
offering everything to everybody and you don't have to correct <laughs> you don't have to but you do you do have to go okay it's gonna take me x amount of time longer probably and can you float that long right can i float that long or should i do acrylic get clients faster and then maybe transition them you know so like if you're like no 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 i'm sticking with gel that's fine mm-hmm. it's gonna take you a long time do you have the float can you be patient yeah those are the things that you have to really understand. You know, it's super, super important yep. in starting a nail career. Let us know in the comments below your take on this topic. We would love to hear about it. Tracy, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you next time on the Biz Talk. Subscribe channel now. Subscribe channel now. Subscribe.